Thank you for taking time to listen to the 39th Street Church of Christ Daily Devotional. The devotional today is Christian Activist Arise by Jack Williams. You look around and you see things that really disgust you, don't you? You see racism running rampant. Everybody, it seems, of different skin color can come to the point they hate anybody who has another color or has another accent or comes from another country. Racism's alive and well all around us. But it's not just that. You know, you look at such things as violence. There's police brutality. There's brutality in the home. There's brutality against children. You know, you look and immorality is just surrounding us. It's almost like people are trying to compete with the description given in Genesis 6 where the very thought of their heart was on evil continually. So what are you going to do? Well, let's have a protest. Well, nothing wrong with that. As long as it's done legally. You know, Romans the 13th chapter, we find that we're to be subject to the powers that be. And by the way, that was written at a time whenever maybe our society might look good compared to what was going on and what the government was doing. But we are to obey them unless, of course, according to Acts 5, they violate the will of God. They do things, command us to do things that aren't according to God. We obey God rather than man. But protesting is fine. Now, the sad thing is some people go beyond that and they add sin unto sin. They go into rioting. Well, that's not a godly way. God would condemn that very clearly. You know, the only time that you read about rioting in the Bible, it's evil. You think about whenever the Lord was taken by the Roman government, Pilate knew there was no guile within the man, there was nothing wrong with Jesus Christ. And he sought to have the people release him, but they cried out, they become riotous, and wanted to release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. They were incited to that by others round about. And then in Acts 17, you find a riot at Ephesus where followers of God were being threatened again. And many of them didn't even know what was going on, but they were just caught up in the moment by those ungodly leaders who incited that riot. But children of God, you know, we act different. We don't involve ourselves in ungodliness to fight ungodliness. Instead, we realize God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. So we realize we confront racism. We realize in Genesis 1 and 27, God created man in his image. What color? Every color. What accent? Well, accents didn't come about until you get over to the Tower of Babel. But God created all men everywhere. They're of Acts 17, verse 26, the same blood. Jesus Christ died for all men. You know, if we realize that and we do as God said, 1 John 4 and verse 11, we ought to love one another as God loved us. Racism would disappear. So we preach the word. We set forth who we are. And we teach others. Racism can't exist whenever the love of God is there. What about violence towards one another? Well, Matthew, the seventh chapter and verse 12, the golden rule. Do unto others, you know, whatsoever you would that men should do unto you, you do also to them. Well, I'm not going to beat somebody if I believe that. I'm not going to beat somebody if I love them as God loved them. I look and I, you know, every moral issue is addressed in God's word. So we teach that. But sometimes people say they won't listen. Well, that shouldn't shock us. The Lord said in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 13 and 14, there's a narrow way that leads to eternal life. That's those who teach that word, who follow that word. And he says, few there be that find it. But there's a broad way that leads to destruction. Many there be that enter, that enter therein. The reason is men love darkness rather than light. That's the majority. And that's tragic, but we don't give up. Jesus didn't give up. Whenever we were yet in sin, he came and he gave his life, as we're told in Romans, the fifth chapter. So we don't give up either. 
you know, whenever persecution comes, you, you think about the horrors of things that go on, how people treat others and how we react. Well, go back and read about the crucifixion of Jesus. They gave him the most despicable, horrendous death they could conceive of. And yet, children of God, they didn't riot. They ended up preaching this one who was killed. You look and you find in Acts the seventh chapter, Stephen, stoned to death. If you want to see something horrific, study about stoning. Children of God didn't riot. As a matter of fact, the persecution rose against the children of God at that point that they went away from Jerusalem. Only apostles stayed, it said. Well, what'd they do? Did they run and arrange some kind of big riot to come by? No, they went everywhere preaching the word. But you say, well, you already said people won't listen. No, they won't. A lot of them won't. You know, 1 Peter 3, we're told about a woman who is married to a man who won't listen. Not a Christian. And God's instruction isn't to riot against him. Instead, he instructs the woman, you live a godly life. Your chaste conversation, your godly life might convert him without the word. In other words, the word demonstrated. So we go out and I, like you, disgusted by the immorality that is there, including the rioting. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to preach the word. That's the answer. That's the answer God gave, and I can't improve on it. They won't listen. I'm going to keep on living the word. I'm going to be that example. And hopefully they'll get to the point sometime they'll get disgusted by all that's going on, and they might ask a reason of the hope that's in us as Peter talks about, and we're ready to give an answer because we've prepared to preach the word, we've prepared to live the word. That is Christian activism, and that's what we ought to be. I hope every one of us is activists, but we're Christian activists. Preaching, teaching, exhorting, encouraging, and living. That's how a Christian changes the world and makes things better. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short devotional. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified of other devotionals that will be forthcoming. Also, we encourage you to join us online live as we stream our services at each service time. More information can be found on our website at the link below. Thank you.